Hey guys, Dr. Dost here, back again for our Latin American Spanish review. And so we're working on level one right now, uh, part four, and we're focusing on the material in uh, Mango's Latin American Spanish course. Latin American Spanish course. All right, so let's get started. My name is Peter and I am a Spanish student. How would we say that? My name is Peter and I am a Spanish student. Again, you guys know the drill. Take what time you need, pause the recording if you need to, but you should be saying the answers out loud. Even if you get them wrong, it doesn't matter. It's the fact that you're engaging with the material, that you're trying to answer it, that is going to actually help you to improve over time, to become faster at it and more accurate. So be willing to make mistakes. All right, my name is Peter and I am a Spanish student. Me amo Peter. Y soy estudiante de español. Me amo Peter. Y soy estudiante de español. Okay, so I am a student viewed as uh, permanent and, uh, you know, kind of treated as like professions. So in English, we would say I am a student of Spanish. But in Spanish, we would just say soy estudiante. I am student. And notice we don't use estoy. Estoy would be, you know, for things that are temporary. Okay, I am Canadian, but I have been at university in Lima since January. All right, we're dealing with some long sentences here. So it's going to take you a little extra time, and that's okay. All right, I am Canadian, so you want to think, is this viewed as permanent or temporary? Ser or estar? I am Canadian, but I have been at university in Lima since January. Soy canadiense, pero estoy en la universidad en Lima desde enero. So, soy canadiense. I am Canadian. That is viewed as permanent. Pero estoy en la universidad. Now, interesting here, the translation is I have been in university or at university. Okay. Um, there is another way to say I have been in Spanish, but we're not going to deal with it at this level yet. So some of the more complicated tenses, the perfects and the pluperfects and the, you know, the uh, perfect passives and pluperfect passives, we're not going to deal with right now. But for the time being, notice that we're literally saying, I am Canadian, but I am in the university in Lima since January. Okay. So the wording is very different from English, but you'll kind of get the feel for it. The, you know, the more you see these sentences, um, the more you'll just get the feel for it. So, soy canadiense, pero estoy en la universidad en Lima desde enero. And notice it's en la universidad, where we would say just at university, not at the university in English. So, there's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between Spanish and English. That goes for any language, actually. So, Jose Carlos and Alberto are my friends. Okay, how would we say that? This one's a little bit easier. But you have to think about plurality now. Jose, Jose Carlos y Alberto son mis amigos. Son mis amigos. Right? They are. Now, we're not going to use están which also means they are, because that would be for something more temporary. So we're going to use son because friendship is viewed as permanent. Okay, even though um, reality indicates otherwise sometimes. Again, these explanations that I'm giving you for, you know, about things being temporary and permanent, they're a little bit oversimplistic, but they serve the purpose at this level. So I'm, I'm avoiding being super precise about these grammar rules because um, it gets in the way of actually just learning to speak the language. All right, so they are brothers and they are from Cusco, but they are also in Lima. Oops, sorry about that. Um, so, well, you have the answer in front of you. So they are brothers, 
So ellos son hermanos. That's viewed as permanent. Ellos son hermanos. Y son de Cusco. They are from Cusco. All right. Now, why is it son? Because point of origin, right, or place of origin, viewed as permanent. Pero también, but also, están en Lima. So están here means they are, but this time we're talking about a location, which is where they are right now, but not necessarily permanent, right? Um, so, pero también están en Lima. So notice the difference between son and están. They both mean they are, but they have two very different functions. Ellos son hermanos y son de Cusco, pero también están en Lima. They speak Spanish and Quechua. Now, Quechua is a, it happens to be an indigenous language uh, in certain um, Latin American countries. You know, you go to Ecuador, you'll probably encounter some Quechua words, for instance, but it's not just in Ecuador. So for the purpose of, uh, you know, my class, I'm, I'm not so concerned that you know the word Quechua, even though it's nice and easy, because it's Quechua. So, ellos hablan, they speak. Ellos hablan español y Quechua. Ellos hablan español y Quechua. So, hablan, right? Because it's plural. It's the they form. Jose Carlos is also a student at the university, and Alberto is a nurse. Take your time with it. Again, saying them out loud, trying to write them out. Don't be afraid of getting wrong answers. Doesn't cost you anything. But being willing to get wrong answers and being willing to make mistakes is actually the key to success in learning a language. So, Jose Carlos también es estudiante en la universidad y Alberto es enfermero. Jose Carlos también, he also, es estudiante, is a student. Notice we don't say es un estudiante, right? I think we talked about that before. En la universidad y Alberto es enfermero. Alberto is a nurse. So because he's male, it's enfermero, not enfermera. I speak Spanish every day, and in the fall, I'm going to visit Cusco. I speak Spanish every day, and in the fall, I'm going to visit Cusco. Hablo español todos los días, y en otoño voy a conocer Cusco. So, hablo, I speak. Hablo español. I speak Spanish. Todos los días. Now, this literally means all the days, but it translates to every day. Todos los días. Okay? And remember, días is masculino. It's masculine. Okay? It's masculine. Even though it has the A, días. And that's why when we say the days, it's not las días, it's los días. Los días. And because Todos, the word for all, is modifying, or, you know, let's put it simpler, more simply, uh, it's, it's describing días. It has to have the masculine singular ending, which is os. So, todos los días, not todas las días, okay? Todos los días. Y en otoño, and in fall, or in, in autumn, voy a conocer, so voy means I am going, I am going, from the verb ir, voy. Voy a, I am going to, I am going to, conocer. Now, conocer oftentimes means to meet, right? Okay? So if you say, gusto conocerlo, it means it's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you, gusto conocerlo. Okay? But it could also mean to discover, okay? Or to, you know, like to visit in the sense of discover, so, in otoño voy a conocer Cusco. In, in otoño, I'm going to visit Cusco, to get to know it by visiting. That's the kind of the connection there. I'm going to get to know it by visiting. So, hablo español todos los días y en otoño voy a conocer Cusco. Okay, let's switch gears for a minute. New dialogue. How would we say good morning? 
How do we say good morning? And this might be tricky, even though it's so easy. Sometimes when you get bogged down in <laughs> in learning difficult things, when you go back to the simple stuff, you completely forget it. And that's a, a normal part of learning too. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. I have a reservation for Friday the 2nd under the name of Laura Gomez. I have a reservation for Friday the 2nd under the name of Laura Gomez. Again, this is a little tricky in the phraseology. It's not a, an exactly literal translation here of the English. Tengo una reserva para el viernes for the Friday dos. For the Friday two. And in English we would say for Friday the second. But in Spanish, you kind of like saying for the Friday too. Tengo una reserva para el viernes dos a nombre de, which literally translates to to name of, to name of. But in English, we would say under the name of, under the name of. So, tengo una reserva para el viernes dos a nombre de Laura Gomez. And what is your address, please? And what is your address, please? And what is your address, please? Again, you saying these out loud? I know I keep reminding you, but it's very easy to just get into the, you know, to a passive way of learning and just listening and reading. I want you to be anticipating and, you know, coming up with the answers yourselves. What is your address, please? Y cuál es su dirección, por favor. Y cuál. Cuál oftentimes means which, but it can also mean what. Um, the words que and the word cuál, um, they, they kind of overlap. They both can mean what and they both can mean which in English. And there are rules behind them. I'm not going to get into it now. My opinion is the best thing to do is just learn how they're used by learning sentences. Okay? So, ¿y cuál es su dirección? What is your address? Notice it looks like the word direction, but it's going to translate to address here. ¿Y cuál es su dirección? Por favor. Por favor. Please. I live at 10 San Martin Street. I live at 10 San Martin Street. Sorry, I've been kind of sloppy with capital letters here. Vivo en la calle San Martín 10. Vivo, I live, vivo, en la calle San Martín, in the street San Martín, en la calle San Martín 10. So notice the word order is very different in Spanish. Vivo en la calle San Martín 10. What is your phone number? What is your phone number? ¿Cuál es su número de teléfono? ¿Cuál es su número? What is your number? Now, su is the polite form for your. If you were being informal, you would say, ¿Cuál es tu número? Right? ¿Cuál es tu número de teléfono? But here, because we're being formal, it, you know, you're making a reservation at a hotel, you're going to keep things polite. Okay? ¿Cuál es su número de teléfono? Now, if we didn't know what the context was, ¿Cuál es su número de teléfono? Could also mean, what is his phone number or what is her phone number? Right? So, su can mean your in the, the formal, his or her. ¿Cuál es su número de teléfono? All right, now, I just put the numbers up here. Now, typically in Spanish, when phone numbers are given, um, you don't list the digits individually like we do in English. But just because this is an entry-level uh, video, we're going to keep it really simple. So we'll just identify the numbers individually. So, siete. Now, put the hoosie majiga over here. Siete. 
cero cuatro siete cero cuatro siete ocho seis siete ocho seis tres tres dos tres tres dos Your room is number 30. Your room is number 30. Now this is going to be tricky. You might recall from reviewing these slides before that this is not going to be a totally literal translation. Su habitación es la 30. Su habitación es la 30. So su habitación means your room, your room es is, and then la trenta. Now, la just literally means the. So this sentence is saying your room is the 30. Your room is the 30. But the reason we use la here is because it refers back to room. So it's, it's kind of a short way of saying your room is room 30. But instead of repeating the word habitación, you just put the appropriate word for the in its place. Su habitación, which is a feminine word, su habitación es la treinta. Su habitación es la habitación treinta. The green card is for your room. The green card is for your room. La tarjeta verde es para su habitación. La tarjeta verde, the card green, the card green, we would say the green card in English, es para, is for, es para su habitación. Su habitación. And can you think of why the word es is used instead of está here? La tarjeta verde es para su habitación. So give that some thought. Why es not está? Okay, one final dialogue and then we're done. Okay, so, Hotel Capital, good morning. Or Capital Hotel, good morning. Hotel Capital, buenos días. Hotel Capital, buenos días. Good morning, I have a reservation for today. Good morning, I have a reservation for today. Buenos días, tengo una reserva para hoy. Buenos días, tengo una reserva para hoy. I have a reservation for today. Can you think of how to say you have a reservation for today? I'm not going to give you the answer. I want you to think of it. How would you say you have a reservation for today? A little homework for you. In whose name? Meaning, in whose name is the reservation? In whose name? A nombre de quien? Literally, to name of who? To name of who? In whose name? A nombre de quien? A nombre de quien? So, quien is the interrogative word, question word, meaning who? A nombre de quien? Oh, Milo's barking at the uh, birds. In my name, Anna Perez. What is the address of the hotel? In my name, Anna Perez. What is the address of the hotel? Well, Milo's on a mission here. He's not happy about the birds. A mi nombre, Anna Perez. ¿Cuál es la dirección del hotel? Remember, don't pronounce the H. A mi nombre, Anna Perez. ¿Cuál es la dirección del hotel? 
And remember, dirección means address. The hotel is on 4 San Martin Street. The reservation is for the night. He's a faithful guard dog. I'm not even sure if the microphone's picking him up, but he's on a tear right now. El hotel está en la calle San Martín, 4. El hotel está en la calle San Martín, 4. And can you think of why está is used here and not es? El hotel está en la calle San Martín, 4. La reserva es, no está, la reserva es para la noche. La reserva es para la noche. It's okay, my my. You'll be all right. Yeah. Yes, but I'm in the city. Is it possible to have the reservation now? Yes, but I'm in the city. Is it possible to have the reservation now? Sí, pero estoy en la ciudad. ¿Es posible tener la reserva ahora? Sí, pero estoy. Notice it's not soy. Estoy. Why is that? Why is it estoy and not soy? Sí, pero estoy en la ciudad. ¿Es posible? Notice it's not está posible. ¿Es posible tener la reserva ahora? See, I'm not going to keep explaining why it's es versus estoy, or es versus está, or estoy versus soy, because I want you to start thinking about that on your own. And even if you can't come up with the answer, if you ask the question and you think about it, you see enough sentences, I guarantee you'll come up with the answer. Yes, but it's $60 a day. Yes, but it's $60 a day. Sí, pero son 60 dólares por día. Sí, pero son 60 dólares por día. Yes, but literally, yes, but they are $70. Yes, but they are $70 per day. Okay? In English, we would say it is $70. In Spanish, son 60 dólares por día. All right, and does the hotel have a swimming pool? All right, and does the hotel have a swimming pool? Está bien, ¿y el hotel tiene piscina? Está bien, ¿y el hotel tiene piscina? Notice it's not una piscina here, because with the, word, with the verb tener, tengo, tiene, tiene, you don't necessarily need un or una before a word. Notice also that está bien is translated all right. This can also mean, in a different context, mean he is well, you are well, she is well. Okay. But here it's like, okay, all right, está bien. Yes, it has a pool and a gym from 8 in the morning to 8 at night. Yes, it has a pool and a gym from 8 in the morning to 8 at night. Sí, tiene una piscina y un gimnasio de 8 de la mañana a 8 de la noche. Sí, tiene una piscina y un gimnasio de 8 de la mañana a 8 de la noche. And here the una comes back, the un comes back. You're going to find there's inconsistency with all this, and that's how language is. Sí, tiene una piscina y un gimnasio. De ocho de la mañana a ocho de la noche. Fine, thanks. See you later. Fine, thanks. See you later. Bien, gracias. Hasta luego. Bien, gracias. Hasta luego. All right, now how would we say, my name is Carlos? My name is Carlos. Mi nombre es Carlos. Mi nombre es Carlos. 
How else could we say that? Me llamo Carlos. Two different ways. Mi nombre es Carlos. Me llamo Carlos. Two different ways. I'm on vacation at the Luna Hotel on the beach in Cancun, Mexico. I'm on vacation at the Luna Hotel on the beach in Cancun, Mexico. Now, here, I'm on vacation is estoy de vacaciones. Estoy de vacaciones, which is literally translates to I am of vacations. I am of vacations. But it means I'm on vacation. Estoy de vacaciones en el Hotel Luna, en la playa, on the beach, en la playa de Cancún, México. En la playa de Can Cancún, México. My wife, my brother, and I have a reservation for a room from Monday, January 6th to Tuesday, January 21st. My wife, my brother, and I have a reservation for a room from Monday, January 6th to Tuesday, January 21st. Mi esposa, mi hermano y yo tenemos una reserva de una habitación de lunes 6 al martes 21 de enero. Mi esposa, mi hermano y yo tenemos una reserva de una habitación de lunes 6 al martes 21 de enero. My wife's name is Sandra. She is a journalist and is 30 years old. My wife's name is Sandra. She's a journalist and she is 30 years old. Mi esposa se llama Sandra. Mi esposa se llama Sandra. Ella es periodista y tiene 30 años. She has 30 years. Mi esposa se llama Sandra. Ella es periodista y tiene 30 años. She has 30 years. She's 30 years old. My brother's name is Sergio, or Sergio in English, I guess, and he is a dentist in Colombia. He's 27 years old. My brother's name is Sergio, and he's a dentist in Colombia. He's 27 years old. Mi hermano se llama Sergio y es odontólogo. Okay, you can kind of see the word dentist in there, kind of, sort of. Right? Mi, hermano, mi hermano se llama Sergio y es odontólogo en Colombia. Él tiene 27 años. Él tiene 27 años. I'm 31. I'm also a journalist, and I love Mexico. I'm 31. I'm also a journalist, and I love Mexico. Yo tengo 31. I have 31. Notice they don't even use años here. Yo tengo 31. Soy periodista también. I'm a journalist also. And notice, even for males, periodista is both the masculine and the feminine form. There's no periodista. Soy periodista también y me encanta México. And I love Mexico. Y me encanta México. My favorite beach is Cancun. My favorite beach is Cancun. Mi playa favorita es la de Cancún. Es la de Cancún. Is the of Cancún. Like the beach of Cancún. Mi playa favorita es la playa de Cancún. Mi playa favorita es la de Cancún. But in Colombia, I love the beaches of Cartagena, and San Andres. Pero en Colombia me encantan las playas de Cartagena y de San Andres. Notice it's me encantan now because 
I love more than one thing, the beaches. Me encantan las playas. If you want to say I love the beach, me encanta la playa, but I love the beaches, me encantan las playas de Cartagena y de San Andres. They are both beautiful and warm. They are both beautiful and warm. Las dos son hermosas y calurosas. Las dos son hermosas y calurosas. The two. Now, why is it feminine? Why is it las dos? Because it's referring to las playas. So literally, the two, but the two what? Las dos playas. Las dos son hermosas y calurosas. They're both beautiful and warm. Okay, good job today, everybody. That is it. Um, for those who are watching this video for my in-class um, uh, Spanish class, um, this is actually going to be the final video for the trimester one exam. So I said there was going to be a fifth video that you would be tested on. I'm changing my mind on that. It's You're only going to be tested on these four videos. Um, next trimester is a different story. We're going to be uh, really putting the pedal to the metal, but um, but this is a good start uh, for the first trimester of the year. Oh, there goes my alarm. And, uh, you know, again, you can keep watching these videos so Dr. Dost can always be with you to help you explain this stuff. Um, if you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of me. I will see you next time, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.